Well, hello, ladies and gentlemen, wherever you may be around the world. I am Jay Campbell, of course, and you are watching the Jay Campbell podcast. And I'm very excited to, to be blah, to be joined in my virtual StreamYard studio today with a good friend of mine, Chris Burris. Chris, what is up, my brother? How are you? Not much, Jay. So great to connect again. Um, I, you participated in the Longevity Summit we'll be talking about today. That was amazing. Uh, I'm excited to share information with your audience as usual. Yeah, for sure. So you guys, you know, a lot of you guys are familiar. The old school J OG Jay Campbell listening audience knows Chris because Chris and I have go way back. We've done multiple podcasts together. Uh, originally, when Nick and I formulated a seer, Chris, that was five years ago, bro. Can Man, you it that? feels like yesterday, right? I, uh, I know, but uh, so Chris is company, which we'll talk a little bit about today. It's an amazing company, My Vital C. They sell carbon 60 products for people and animals. I always like to say animals because if you are watching the Jake Campbell podcast right now and your dog or cat is not taking carbon 60, you are missing the boat. You are missing out. We can talk about that later, but, uh, but again, Chris and I go way back uh, at his company. Again, My Vital C is an awesome company, which I still have an affiliate code, which I'm sure it's, I think it's, is it J15? I don't even know. It's, it's just J. It's just J now. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So he I hooked mean, you so up. Yeah, so yeah, so like you know that 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 code will be in the show notes. But we're actually here today to talk about Chris's new book, uh, and I'll let, just give you guys real quick his bio for yeah, his new bio for today's podcast. Uh, host of the Uncovering Secrets to Longevity Health Summit, as he said, which I am a willing participant. Uh, he's a patent holder with a surprising twist. He's not just a visionary scientist, but a master of comedy improv, and founder and of course chief scientist, of course at My Vital C where he does manufacture the Nobel Prize winning molecule responsible for the single longest longevity experimental result in history, which is a full 90% extension of life, which is hilarious yeah. because Chris and I were just talking off air about how many people, not you guys in the Jay Campbell audience, but how many people to, in the general public today still don't know Jack about carbon 60, Chris. Yeah. No, it's 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 a lot. And, and, and you go into an environment, I went to, you know, Dave Asprey's biohacking conference, it was in Orlando. We'll actually have a booth in in the one in May in Dallas this coming year. Well, this year, right? Um, and it, you know, this is biohackers. By the way, I absolutely love biohackers because we have these uh, these convenient uh, ampules, and you would hand this to a biohacker, and they would open it, and they yep. would start taking it, and they would say, <laughs> "What's in this?" Because <laughs> they are that kind of group. Um, but even in that like really open-minded health focus, longevity focused group, you know, it's still 70% of the people don't, don't know what C60 is. And really yeah. we kind of push in the direction of ESS 60 and we could talk about that at one point, but yeah, it's amazing. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, so, I mean, again, you've had, so by the way, how long now have you guys had, uh, my vital C ESC 60, is that five, six years? How old is yeah, that company? So so really 2018 was when we started really kind of jumping into the supplement business in, awesome. in, in earnest. Um, and so like kind of latter part of 2018 is when we launched my vital C, uh, and, and we do, you're right. So this is, this is the molecule. If you're watching, I'm holding up a soccer ball shaped molecule where the lines on the soccer ball represent the bonds between the carbon atoms. It's 60 carbon atoms in the, yeah. the shape of this, uh, you know, spherical soccer ball shape, uh, just real quick. Three scientists discovered it here in Houston. That's where we're based. Uh, the three scientists who discovered it won the Nobel Prize for that discovery. They actually, the the, the, the material's amazing. It, it outperforms most materials, yeah. uh, better inks, tires, batteries, oh. photocells. But they thought it would be toxic. They threw it in a toxicity study. Instead of being toxic, the test subjects that they gave it to, uh, in this case, Wistar Rats. By the way, it was my lab that provided the material. My lab is actually mentioned in that original publication. Also, we're doing a, a publishing an article with that original researcher, Dr. Fathi Musa. Uh, that's about to come out here in 2024. So that's really exciting. Uh, but in that study, the test subjects, Wistar rats, live 90% longer than the control group. And then that's what kind of thrust me into the to, into the supplement space. So, so yeah, we're going on six years now, right? That's awesome. And yeah, and you know, for personal uh, you know, interest for the people, I think most of you guys know that me and Monica have been using carbon 60 since Chris started sending it to me back in 2019. Uh, I've also uh, obviously worked with Ken at shop C60, which was originally purple power. 
both of those guys are friends of mine. Um, I don't have a war in the fight. I think Chris sells carbon. You sell the carbon 60 to Ken. Is that correct? Or you we guys have it yeah. in the past. Um, yeah. yeah. I mean, our lab provided the original material. Where do you go when you're actually trying to recreate this product? Um, right. so yeah, we have in the past, they, they no longer purchase from us and, um, and, uh, you, you know, uh, We'll leave. We'll just leave it at that. We'll leave it at that. But the yeah. bottom line is, to not get into a competition, carbon yeah. sixty is important. As we just discussed, almost nobody knows about it. So let's just spend our time letting people be aware about this, and then when we're you know hundred million or billion right. dollar companies, then we right. can fight over market share. Well, I mean, <laughs> the truth is, is like the story is, is like if you don't know about carbon sixty, you should know about carbon yeah. sixty, and you absolutely should be using it because I take literally two tablespoons every single day. My wife takes a tablespoon and a half, and both of our dogs, Thor and Simba, are fed a dropper of Chris's bacon flavored carbon sixty. And I've told people this many times before you will absolutely 1,000 million percent extend the life of your dog or cat or any that domesticated you know animal by giving them carbon 60. I mean, again, the, uh, the benefits of it are scientifically proven in rats, uh, but in people anecdotally, myself included, it definitely is an amazing anti-aging product and everyone in my, you know, in, in, in truth, obviously should be using it. And again, you know, without going rabbit holing here, you know, we had it in our hair regrowth product. Yeah. It literally regrows hair. Yeah. Yeah. We were getting we were getting skin and hair improvements before that formula even came out, before that concept right. came out. Um yes. and we, we actually now have, have a um a, a face serum that we we use really for a night serum. Uh I didn't want to get into that business. And then one of our business partners like, we should do this. And yeah. so we did it yeah. to support that business partner and the testimonials are 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 just off the chart. You know, I don't I don't Jay, I don't think I've shared with you kind of the latest theory, right? So the theories are, hey, why do these rats live longer? Well, if it's just sleep, that would help, right? Mental, yeah. physical, and an emotional improvement when you get good sleep. Yeah. Uh, if it's just uh, anti-inflammatory and antioxidant, right? Anti-inflammatory, you have to be careful and we can can say that it is an anti-inflammatory as it relates to exercise induced inflammation. The FDA allows us to say that. Any other kind of inflammation is disease, so we're not allowed to talk about that. We got more research to do. <laughs> Antioxidant. Um, we've got uh, an ad hoc study out on the web, 172 times more powerful than vitamin C. Uh, and then there's peer-reviewed published research that shows it to be 125 times more powerful than vitamin C. But the new theory, right? So I don't think I've shared it. the boss theory. Does that ring a bell? No, no, no. Sure. Okay. So this is this is pretty spectacular. So it's the boss theory, buffering oxidative stress system. Wow. We know this molecule, right? The soccer ball shaped molecule gets into the mitochondria. We know that from peer reviewed published research. We know from even back in the nineties, when this was discovered that it can hold up to six negatively charged particles on the exterior of this cage. Um, that makes it a great antioxidant. That's why it's an antioxidant. So our current picture is that it works like a paddy wagon. I've got a kind of interesting analogy. Bourbon Street, right? The end of Mardi Gras. You've got these drunk. Well, let's talk a little bit about mitochondria. So mitochondria is the powerhouse of every cell. Every cell in your body, except hemoglobin, has between 50 and 5,000 mitochondria in it. Again, they generate the energy of the uh, of, that the cell needs to do its job. Like most energy sources, like your car going down the, the road, you've got exhaust coming out. Like a smokestack on a power plant, you got smoke coming out of it. There's bad things. What the mitochondria produces is reactive oxygen species. And if they go unchecked, those are the ones that do the oxidative damage in ours. In the mitochondria, there are two antioxidants that typically manage the reactive oxygen species. That's glutathione and melatonin, right? Melatonin, the yep. sleep hormone. Interesting. Our most consistent testimonials, people take it in the morning, mental focus and energy during the day, and then better sleep that might. Here we are in the same environment, that mitochondria with melatonin. So think about Bourbon Street, right? The end of the night, the drunken reactive oxygen species are tearing down light poles and breaking windows and messing up cars. And you've got the police, the glutathione and the melatonin coming in, handcuffing themselves to these reactive oxygen species and getting them off of Bourbon Street. But if those get overwhelmed, now these reactive oxygen species are running around doing even more damage. And what this is where the paddy wagon theory comes in, because this 
soccer ball shaped molecule can hold on to those reactive oxygen species just like a paddy wagon would, right? right. You just shove them in there. And we think, hey, I'll, I'll, I'll wrap this up with a, another kind of concept here, but, but now they're not able to do the damage that they were going to do. And right. when that mitochondria can replenish the glutathione and the melatonin, it can come in, handcuff itself to yeah. these reactive oxygen species and get them off of Bourbon Street and out of that paddy wagon. So literally the boss buffering oxidative stress system. And one more caveat, we know that reactive oxygen species are important signaling molecules, right? Yeah. So if you just, I mean, I think we've even had conversations potentially about if you take too many antioxidants, it can kind of damper the, the, the effects that you actually want to have. Right. So you really, you want this fine balance. We believe that when it's attached to the exterior of this cage, yeah. the ESS-60 cage, that's what we call it, ESS-60, um, it can still do the signaling, but doesn't do the damage. Right. It's like it really is the boss. So so to, to, to wrap that up and make it deeper, like what do you guys, if you guys change like dosing recommendations or strategies for people, like again, just the average garden variety, you know, Tom, Tom and uh, Jane Smith, who are in their 50s and 60s versus like a ultra, you know, elect or super competitive like biohacker. Do you guys, are you guys like changing dosing strategies at all? Or is it? Yeah. So I can, I I guess. So so just kind of an interesting point. One drop, just one drop of our ESS-60 in olive oil has 475 times more molecules than you have cells in your body. And and I'm talking about this soccer ball shaped molecule, right? So, it's conceivable you could take, I don't know, say 5,000 drops of this and then never again, right, if it's resident. I don't think that's how it works. People um, show, like, after some period of being off the product that they notice the difference and get back on the product. So in terms of dosing, there's a lot to understand. This is still very much a beta product. Yeah. Um, I did an allometric calculation from those rats in that original study where they lived 90% longer uh, and that's really where we landed on the five milliliters, which is one teaspoon. I can share with you, we've got a two-time U.S. ultra running champion. His name is Anthony Kunkel. Um, guys, j- just a beast, right? Like just yeah. a running beast. He yeah. he runs, I don't know, 60 when he's when he's ramping up like 60 miles in a week. Um, I, I would have to run 30 times because I tend to run like twice, two miles at a time. <laughs> like I don't, <laughs> but, but he's amazing and he loves our product and what he'll do Early in his training block, he's really focused on the um, MCT product because it's good. He's trying to lean down. Right. right? MCT is great at managing hunger. And then as he gets closer to the race, he'll, he'll ramp up. So so it is something that you've got to play with on your own to figure out what, what works best for you. I can share some small amount of people say if they take it later in the day, it'll negatively impact their sleep, you know, because the first thing you get is focus and energy. Of course. Yeah, mitochondrial stim. Yeah. Right? That's not true for me, but I can also drink a cup of coffee and go right to sleep. So we right. do recommend that people take it in the morning. Yeah, and, and again, I take two tablespoons. Yeah. Every single day. You're not messing right? around. Yeah. Right. I mean, I mean, well, it's funny, right? So, like, look at the picture behind you back in the old school days of Jay Campbell and look at my hair in that picture, which was almost non-existent, and the hair that I have now is 100% due to carbon 60 and peptides. Yeah. I mean, I, that is an absolute fact. I would, I tell people this all the time. I have androgenic alopecia. It's genetic, obviously from the mo- your mom's father's uh, side. And uh, I would be bald. I mean, there, you know, there's six brothers in my family and four of us have the androgenic alopecia and two of us don't. But without that product that I use, again, which is a combination of carbon 60 and uh, uh, copper peptide GHKCU, I would not have hair. That is a fact. I mean, anybody who's been following me for now knows, again, in that picture, Chris, that I did for you guys, I didn't have hair. I was at that point literally shaving my hair or shaving my head all the way down because I had like, I was half bald. Now, I granted, I wasn't worth it. Yeah, yeah. I'm still thin, but I have enough hair on top of my head now that I can just like, you know, put a little bit of product in and push it up. And it's totally due to carbon 60 and again, GHKCU. (laughs) And there's, you know, again, without getting rabbit holing here, there's other peptides now that they're finding that are even, you know, as good as copper peptide GHKCU and truthfully work in synergy with it. And that's what, you know, Nick's newest product is, it's called Folatin, and that's the product that I'm currently using. Uh, it also has other peptides in it. But anyway, I don't want to rabbit hole, but truthfully, cool. I have hair because of carbon 60. My dog Simba is almost 17 years old. He should be dead. 
And he literally has been probably given three to four, maybe even five years of dog life due to carbon 60. We know that for a fact because you know the story. And again, it's on our past podcast. All right. Yeah. So let's talk about your book. Uh, and, and obviously, you know, how it relates to you creating this longevity conference. Um, you know, why did you decide to write that book? So, so live longer and better. I mean, imagine my journey, right? I'm a happy go lucky carbon nanomaterial scientist. If there is such a thing, that's me. <laughs> and, and this study comes out where the rats live 90% longer. My business partner and I really didn't want to get in the supplement industry. Like you, you have more awareness of how challenged we'll call it challenged the supplement industry can oh, be. Yeah. And, and we decided really kind of, uh, um, very thoughtfully not to get into this industry. Um, until the latter part of 2017, a guy with a big YouTube following starts talking about all the benefits he's getting, taking it on a daily basis. And now our phones ring in 10 times a day. Yeah. Okay. We're like, what are we going to do with it? We ask ourselves the two questions, the moral question, are we comfortable selling it? I take it. My wife takes it. Everybody on my team takes it. Yes, we're comfortable. By the way, not, you're not required to take it to work here. Just to just care. <laughs> uh, and then the next question is, um, is the FDA, FTC, you got to dot the I's, dot the T's. By the way, let me just throw in right now. The FDA has not evaluated our product. It is not intended to treat, diagnose, cure, or prevent any disease. So the T's are crossed, right? And the I's are dotted. And then we start coming out with this. And our, I, my feel, first... I feel like I should have a disclaimer that goes across the bottom of the... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> warning, warning. <laughs> so so uh, the, the next thing that we start doing is like, hey, is a 90% extension of life even... It sounds like a lot to me, but I yeah. wasn't in the longevity space. Yeah. So I got to start doing this research and start figuring it out. And, and yeah. frankly, some of what I did is like I reached out to you. You yep. graciously had me on my show. So I started yep. learning stuff from you. I yep. started learning fr stuff from all these shows that I'm on. I started reading all these books. I started reading all these papers. I'm a scientist. So reading the papers make perfect sense for me. Yep. And then I've always believed kind of two things. One, when you acquire knowledge, you should share it. 100%. And two, you don't really have the knowledge until you share it. That's right. right. Like that's when you cement knowledge in your brain, when you're running yep. out there and saying, hey, glutathione and melatonin and and my, mitochondria like that's when you really start cementing it and so i, I wanted to write the book um i found a co-author he's a two-time u.s number one uh not u.s new york times number one bestseller by the way that's a that's an echelon right like yeah of course scale yeah. that gets up there yeah um it's a it's tough to get there he's been there twice so we start writing the book and I'm going to be honest, I thought it was going to be, hey, let me do a couple interviews and then he'll write it, right? Because I am i don't fancy myself a writer. I don't write that much. And like on day one, as we're preparing for the book, it's like, all right, Chris, so you need to write your story down and then I'm going to clean it up. And I was like, okay, apparently I'm writing a book. Like that's that's what yeah. happened. Yeah. And you've written lots of books, right? So yeah. <laughs> I don't know how you do it. I, I'm carving out, I'm just putting it on my calendar and carving out like an hour, hour and a half at a time and making this progress and Sometimes I'm rewriting stuff because I forgot I wrote it already. Yep. But it was a great process. And it's the whole process of this molecule. Why Why did I become an entrepreneur, right? Because I think that's relevant. Of course. How has that journey led me here from the perspective of the molecule was discovered here in Houston. We started the company here in Houston. Um, we you know, delivering commercial quantities of carbon nanomaterials to research institutions around the world. Then it becomes the supplement. And then now I'm getting into this longevity space, right? And so, again, I wanted to share that. I wanted people to have access to that. I think the story, you know, it, it's, it's a, it, it may sound grandiose to say that my story is interesting, but it, I believe it is. It's a really no, interesting No, it definitely story. is, man. I mean, I did everybody like, because we have similar stories. I mean, guys that start off as quote unquote wage slaves, you were a scientist and I was a media guy, you yeah. know, like, the, the, the path of entrepreneurialism is an amazing path. And, and, yeah. and so many people have amazing backstories, you know, to get to where you are to put out carbon 60, to sell supplements, to sell all the different things that we sell. And I think that, look, look, I just did a podcast with a guy, a, a very famous Hollywood celebrity before you this morning. And he's actually a friend of mine because before he became a famous Hollywood celebrity, we used to work out together at a gym in Pasadena. That's okay? cool. Yeah. yeah. And so now he's a Hollywood celebrity. And so we just did this podcast and it was amazing, but we were talking about the path is ownership of time. 
Mm-hmm. And when you're not an entrepreneur, you don't own your time, right? You think yep. about like when you're working for someone else, you don't have ownership of your time. Yeah. And so everybody on this planet or in this dimension, the density or dimension, whatever we want to call it, like control of time is the most important thing if you truly want to live a level 10 life, right? Because like if you can't control your time, then what can you ultimately control? You know, again, you're a wage slave, which you were, I was. We were talking about how like, you know, you don't become, nobody who's a successful entrepreneur ever, and I shouldn't say ever, but very rarely does it without first having the structure of being a wage slave. You know, mm, we were talking yeah. about the idea of having an employee ID number, right? Yeah. You know, because yep. then when you become an entrepreneur and you have people that are working for you, you got employee ID numbers. But at the end of the day, the control of time is what allows people to live a better life. Yeah. And, and, and to get there, you have to work. You, you know, you have to put out effort. You have to put out energy into the universe. You know, you have to take action. And so many people, bro, like, and again, I'm not saying entrepreneurism is for everyone, but if you truly want to control your life, you have to become an entrepreneur. It's just that simple. I mean, there is no other way around it. And and I like what you're saying about time because how does that fold into longevity? Right? Exactly. We're just buying exactly. more time, right? If we can buy a lot more time and you go out and read, and this is, you know, covered in the in the book, Live Longer and Better. If you go out and read like uh, Lifespan, Dr. David Sinclair, he's sure. like, hey, I think we can live forever. And he's got reasonable arguments for that. Yes. And, and that was kind of that, I don't know, uh, uh, quantum shift in understanding about kind of medical and longevity is why I then put together the Longevity Summit. And that summit's titled Uncovering the Secrets to Longevity, Live Beyond the Norms. Uh, I interviewed 55 experts, yourself included, yes, sir. Um, on 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 longevity and, and stuff that kind of cursory, some of the stuff I had to bend into longevity, but is still really valuable. Yeah. So um, I'm excited about having put that together. Uh, we did end up getting, in addition to you, some other big names. You know, yep. uh, Dave Asprey uh, yep. is a speaker at it. Uh, Dr. Gundry is a speaker at it. Ben awesome. Greenfield, I know you know him awesome. well. He's yep. a he's a speaker at it. Like it's it. it I managed. I, I'll be honest. Like, if you had told me in the beginning, hey Chris, you need to interview 55 people, and it's going to include these four like amazing guys over there. Yeah. I got Jay. Like we we yep. got a good reasonable relationship. The other three guys I know and yep. have been connected with. Um, I probably would have just said, no, I'm, I'm not going to be able to do that. So I don't want right. to set myself up for failure. And then boom, you know, it just kind of manifested. So it's, awesome, it's, it's been, it's been amazing. And, and I think there's going to be a link in the show notes or that, uh, for that longevity summit, but oh, it's sure. free. So you get to see all of these amazing speakers, um, for free. Uh, and it's over the course of a week, it comes out February 26th. Uh, ends February 3rd. And then if you want to purchase the videos, that's available for a reasonable cause. Like, it's just, it's an amazing well, system. Well, I mean, look, dude, I remember when you interviewed Vory Ford, I think it was back in early December or late November of last year, and it was an amazing interview. I mean, yeah. I, mean I, I mean, I do a lot of podcasts, a lot of interviews, and you asked me a lot of really good questions. We went really deep down the rabbit hole about a lot of stuff. I mean, again, I'll let the listeners listen to it. Yeah, and I'm going to promote it, as you know. Uh, and, 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 you know, not pulling smoke up your ass, I usually reject these things, but I saw the amount of people that you were uh, bringing in and the level of detail. And I was like, no, nah, I'm going to do this. And I mean, again, there's a lot of value in this for sure. As you said, it's free. Uh, and I got, again, guys, a lot of the people that he's speaking to that he got to, to speak at this are really high level people. And to be able to get free, I mean, as you know, dude, some of these guys charge a hell of a lot of money to speak. And for you to be able to get them, you know, to do this out of their time and you to interview them at the level of detail that you did, it's going to be absolutely amazing. I, I don't know if I told you or we, so I, I ended up getting Sergey Young and I don't know if you know who that I is. I know. Of course I know Sergey. Yeah. He's, he's an amazing guy. I think he's off even a lot of the radars of biohackers. It's kind of us who are in the space researching all the time uh, that are aware of him. He's an investor in longevity. He's friends with Peter Diamantes and Tony Robbins. Yep. In fact, T- Tony Robbins and Peter Diam- Diamantes wrote a book and then mentioned um, Sergey Young in it. Uh, he was a fascinating interview because he's the, he's at the 
at the bleeding edge, at the re- at the investing edge of longevity. Like yeah. that was an amazing com- conversation. Again, available on on the summit. What did you guys talk about? So it's interesting. He was interesting because he was the most. Uh, as you saw, I I did a lot of research. Right, I did yeah. between one and three hours of research in preparation for every interview. Yeah, and then I sent you and him a yep. list of questions. Hey, this is how I see it's going sure, to sure, go. Sure. It yep. almost never went that way, but <laughs> but yeah, no, I mean they don't want to talk about stuff that they're bored of talking about. They like talking about stuff they don't normally yeah. talk about. So so he came back, and there were a couple things he didn't want to talk about, and I was like, hey, I think these are really good, and one of them was and ultimately he did authorize it otherwise i wouldn't be saying it here is hey in your investment portfolio where are you like what is your percentage of investment amazing right in testing in 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 uh um maybe gene therapies and just supplements and actually equipment because that that like at least from his perspective you they always say put your money where your mouth is He's yeah. actually putting money where he yeah, thinks of course. The value in longevity is going to be. And where is he? So where what were, what were his like two top investing tips? What, what, like, does he have anything specific? So he didn't have anything specific in that. In that, like, he really kind of went pretty broad. Um, I think one of the key mm-hmm. areas, and and I think we're sorely lacking. Some of the experts that are interviewed were like, yeah, these biological age tests don't really mean anything yeah um i'm not sure that's true and i'm not sure what the biological age test would like you to believe is true yeah. like i think we're yeah. somewhere in between Rick, we are um, it's a good way to look at uh at, at the improvements you might be making relative to the the changes you're making in your life but i would say i would say that's going to be one of them and then just from a personal standpoint i mean well i can skip a set ahead i know you'll probably an- ask this question what was one of the main limiting yeah. factors yeah I found this amazing. I had two interviews with stem cell experts. One of them was Stem Regen. I think I have his uh, his product around here. He's basically put together the right uh, combination. He, he scoured the earth to find those um, those herbs and those roots and those you know leaves or whatever yeah. that the shaman tended to uh, prescribe for kind of general ailments, right? And he looked at their impact on us releasing our own stem cells. Yeah. And was right. able to die. This is so fascinating from a scientific perspective, like because because if one thing releases stem cells, how do you know that the next thing isn't just the same mechanism and then you yeah. don't need to double up on it? Right. Like there's yeah. no reason to get a different one. Yep. You could see that the stem cells re- re- were released at a different um, time scale. Right. So so different mechanisms, because the way that they're being released, the time scale that they're getting released is, is so just amazing research going into this. But stem cells are the things that heal your body, right? Yeah. Like at the end of the day, you no stem cells, no new body. Uh, I interviewed a uh, uh, Dr. Joy Kong. Um, yeah, I know Joy and I are friends. Hold on, go back to stem cell because let's go deeper on that. But so, of course, just like peptides, stem cells have been completely illegally yep. outlawed in the United States. I mean, you know, if you want to do stem cells, Chris, as you know now, we were talking about this before. Yep. You got to go to freaking Honduras or. Panama, Jamaica, Costa Rica, yeah. Mexico. I mean, it's absolutely insane. But I mean, again, if something is effective and it's going to draw money out of Big Pharma's petroleum distillate products, which cause nothing beside it, because that's another story for another day, they don't want it around. And, yes. and, and so, I mean, I mean, again, I was part of this, you know, back in 2018, I want to actually go back 2017 to 2019, dude, all the medical conferences, all they talked about was autologous t- stem cells, PRP and exosomes. Yeah. And then all of a sudden COVID came. And that's obviously when you and yeah. I really became good friends and yeah. our businesses blew up. But like it, it was, it, they, they eliminated these things. Yeah. And yeah, and Dr. Joy Kong is a very huge stem cell person. She's a friend of mine. I've been on her show. She's been on my show. Uh, we met at A4M, actually, of all places, literally back in 2019. But um, that's she's all amazing. That on. Right. Yeah, no, she's genius. But did she talk about stem cells? Oh, yeah. That, yeah. A lot of the conversation was was about stem cells and right and the value Very of stem cool. cells and their impact on your body. And one of the things, right. So, so, again, no stem cells, no life. Right. Or you slowly deteriorate because, I mean, just imagine. If totally. you don't have a mechanic to take your car and you don't know how to work on your car, yep. like eventually it, it's just going to stop working like that. Yep. That's what happens. That's what's going to happen to us. It turns out that those stem cells are tending to come from 
uh, the red material, the red matter in our bone marrow, right? And yep. that matter shrinks. So at some point, and they said that Jean Clement, uh, she's like the oldest living human, right? And they were able to trace that uh, all of the active cells in her body were from one stem cell line. So usually there's multiple stem cell lines. She was down to one stem cell line. Like that was like, you know, imagine imagine you're you're working on a, I don't know, a, a 747. You've got a crew of repair people, but you're down to the one guy or gal who's now repairing the plane. At some point, it's just going to stop. That's what happened to her. And so that's one of that. That for me is the biggest limiting factor in terms of longevity. Now, there are solutions, right? Joy Kong has a way to inject stem cells. We could end up doing a, a dialysis situation with stem cells and extend our lives. Like there's all sorts of workarounds, but from, you know, staying the most natural as you, that was really the only limitation that came out. I think the other thing that was really strong, and, and you're probably already on top of, the, uh, of this kind of living optimized, is just the the negative impact of food sensitivities, oh, right? Dude. And well, we'll just throw on top of that, and I hope you had somebody in there to talk about EMFs. EMFs, both of those are so bad right now. I mean, almost everybody has, quote unquote, food sensitivity or allergic reactions right now, histamine production because of poisoned food in the food supply and obviously poisoned air, not just from the shit they spray, but from the electrical pollution. Yep. Yeah, no. That, by the way, you know what? That's something interesting that you guys should probably look into. I wonder how much carbon sixty buffers uh, dirty EMF. Well, uh, we're pretty good. There's some papers out there that talked about it. Even even Ken originally got into this yeah. into the space yeah. based on he, he was trying to protect himself some of the from some of the radiation that I think he yes. was exposed to. Um, yeah. and, and I think it was radio frequencies, not exactly sure. So, so yeah, there's, there's a lot of reason to believe. And, and, and here's the reality, right? All of these things are doing damage to you. All of them are call, causing, you know, inflammation. Again, we can only talk about exercise induced inflammation. We can't talk <laughs> about the other kinds of inflammation, right? But if you had something to address that inflammation, that would, that would absolutely be beneficial, like clear up. Oh, I didn't share with you. I did two of those biological tests, right? Glycan age, glycan age came up with me being 33 years younger than my current age. So 21. Right. By the right. way, I don't know if I want to be younger because I don't know. No, sorry. I'm, I was 23 in glycan and I think true diagnostic, I'm like 24 and a half. I don't think I've done true diagnostic. I, I, I haven't. I did my DNA age. So this is interesting. When I was uh, 51, uh, it had me at 59. Now uh, it's three years later, I'm 54 and I'm at 58, right? So I'm not happy that it's older, but I'm happy that it's going down. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, I mean, I mean, again, you, you, well, let's just talk about it because I saw Ryan. So Ryan is the CEO of True Diagnostic. He's a very good friend of mine. He's been on my podcast many times. I mean, people forget that Ryan was like the, the guy for peptides in the world because of all of his background in science when he was a tailor-made, but now he's the CEO of True Diagnostic. And he'll tell you that, uh, biological age testing is it's good, but getting better. It's it's yeah. not you know it's it's not where it ultimately will be. But look, it's very simple. This is the Jay Campbell rule of lowering your biological age. Don't drink alcohol, minimize your sugar, fast at least one day a week of twenty hours. I mean, if you really want to be hardcore, fast yeah. two or three days a week of twenty hours. Um, that's it. You obviously exercise, you know, cardiovascular combination of bone bearing resistance. I mean, Chris, if people just didn't drink alcohol and minimize their sugar consumption, they would dramatically improve their biological age. I mean, I mean, I'll, I'll be honest. I just did a picture with my family. Again, I'm the oldest of nine kids, six boys and three girls for Christmas. And one of my friends had never seen my family before. And he was looking at our family and he was like, wow, man, how much older are all your brothers? And I'm like, I'm the oldest. And he was like, what? And so, you know, I mean, and again, I'm not throwing my people under the bus. Yeah, but like, no. Alcohol. You're throwing their diet under the bus. Alcohol and sugar are the great aging mechanisms of humanity. What David Sinclair says that people can live a lot longer, he's absolutely true. But we have to minimize our exposure to toxins. And look, yeah. dude, you know this. And again, I'm not casting aspersions or shame on people that drink alcohol you do you 
But alcohol is a nerve toxin. Yeah. It is a solvent. And when you consume too much of it, and you and I both know there's no such thing as moderation with alcohol. You either do <laughs> too much or you don't. You know, and I know there are people out there that say, it's not true, Jay. I have a nice glass of red with my wife when we go to dinner on the weekend. That's fine. I'm not talking about you. I'm talking yeah. about people who literally drink three glasses of wine a night, Chris. Yeah. Yeah. That is going to aid you faster than anything else. And again, overconsumption of manufactured foods and sugar, yeah. HFCs, fructose, you know, all of these things, again, modernized, you know, mechanical, mechanical, mechanized living from food. It's not good for your body. Yeah. It's not good for your cells. I, I liked what uh, Ben Greenfield said one time, which is, I'd rather take whatever amount of sugar than bad fat, right? Because bad fat, fat is what makes up your cell walls. And so that fat could get inculcated into your system for a much longer period of time. At least sugar, I could go run and get rid of it. Like it would it would go away. So I think I think that's the one thing that I would also add to what you said. Yeah. Reduce your alcohol consumption, maybe take it to zero. There's actually, uh, I'm excited about all the alternative alternatives for alcohol that are coming out now, right? Like you can have this kind of drink, that kind of drink. I haven't played around with those. No, but, I, but it's like vaping with cigarette smoking. It's yeah. worse than smoking. Yeah. Yeah. Don't do it. Exactly. It's so simple. And and, and again, you know, you get into this. I, I, the good news is a lot of people, younger people, because of technology, because of Jay Campbell and Chris Burris and Ben Greenfield, like they're getting better information about things and they have more access. I mean, when you and I grew up at our age, you know, we're Gen Xers, there, there wasn't the internet to teach us, bro. We didn't have no. Grant Cardone videos. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like we read books or we had mentors who taught us. And if you were, mm -hmm. if you grew up in a household where your parents smoked, you smoked. If your parents drank, you drank. You drank, yep. So it's like it's different now in that, you know, there's a lot more alternative info information sources that can really teach people. But, dude, it's really simple. Let's just recap it again. Don't drink alcohol at all. Yeah. Minimize your sugar consumption. Okay. You know, the great Charles Poliquin, may he rest in peace, used to say you get your sugar when you deserve it, right? Sugar deserving is after you work out. Yeah. Whatever it is you do, you know, your body needs to replenish glycogen. So eat your sugar around times that your body requires it. Get six to eight hours of sleep every night. And of course, exercise, bone bearing, resistance training, and of course, cardiovascular. You know, I'm not a big running advocate when you get older, but anything to get good cardiovascular to strengthen the heart and you will mm. live longer. But bro, look at around today. People are couch potatoes. There's an app for that, Chris. There's an app for that. <laughs> why do I have to do anything when I can just have it come to my house? I mean, the guy, the celebrity guy this morning was like, dude, people under the age of 25 don't even know how to make food. Oh, because yeah. Because Uber Eats, yeah. DoorDash. I mean, think about it, bro. Like, they don't know how to even prepare food. It's crazy. Yeah, no, they, they, yeah. And I've got, I've got 13-year-old twins, and I am in a constant struggle. In fact, today I dropped a nuclear bomb in my house because my son didn't get up and do the minimal things that I want him to do. And by the way, it's not much. I need you to read for 10 minutes. I need you to exercise it's for 10 minutes. That's much, one mile. Bro. And I need you to play guitar for 10 minutes before you get on your device. So I wake up, he's yeah. on his device. All right, come out and work out with me. I do a 30 minute workout. He doesn't want to use weights. I'm actually taunting him because he's not using weights. Like, of course. dude, like that's ridiculous. And then, uh, and then I'm like, okay, well, at least read. He falls asleep on the couch. And I said, you know what? No, like the internet is off today. It's the first well, time I have dropped. Dude, all of them. I'm the same way, 14 and 16. And thankfully my six, well, she's not 16. She'll be 16 in three weeks, but the, she's 15. She's in cheer, competitive cheer. Oh, that's so awesome. She's forced to get up early in the morning and to work out and to exercise and to do all the strict, yeah. you know, dieting and conditioning and, and training. But my 14 year old, who's here with me right now, might be even listening to this. She's the you know, other side of the house, hopefully, but maybe not. She listens to everything. She doesn't want to exercise. She, yeah. she, she's got great genetics, but it's not yep. It's not an excuse. She's not, yep. you know, heavy. She's very lean, and, but she, she doesn't want to exercise. And it's like, they want to get on TikTok and they, they want to use their devices and they want to do this and they want to do that. But dude, I'm not kidding you, you know, to that story. Like, 
both of my daughters know how to make food because we make them make us food. <laughs> no, I'm literally not kidding you. Like they were forced. It's the only thing I've ever forced my daughters to do, like to learn how to prepare food. Yeah. Not to be like a domestic slave wife, you know, house goddess, but to prepare food, to have a relationship that's healthy with food. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, cause bro, you can't get a healthy relationship with food when all you fucking do is order DoorDash or yeah. Uber Eats. There is, yeah. No, that's not a relationship with food. You don't even know how to prepare. I mean, dude, I literally had a kid, my not not my daughters, thankfully, but I could see where it would be. One of their friends was like, because I was talking about organic versus Ooh, non-organic. Yeah. Yeah. And, the, and the person literally said to me, oh, isn't that mean, doesn't that mean that you just can't put it in the microwave if it's organic? <laughs> but that's the thing is our children, because of technology, have not learned the basics. They have not learned the things that you and I were taught as children coming up without the internet on, again, ba basic survival skills. How would you boil water? How would you make food if you didn't have fire? You know what I'm saying? Yep. I, mean, I mean, if you didn't have electricity. Yeah. How would you prepare a tuna fish sandwich? How would you make tuna casserole? I mean, these are simple things that you yeah. and I learned to grow up, how to make rice. Well, and, and if you think about, you know, one of the, I think this came up in, in the summit a couple of times where I believe that the reason every diet works for at least a little while, the most important thing is you're getting off of processed foods. I don't care if you're doing carnivore. How are you, how are you eating processed foods all the time and actually keeping track of the meat that you're eating? Like, how does that work? It doesn't, right? So you actually have to buy the meat. You have to actually cook the meat. If you go on to a vegan diet, like how do you eat only vegan except it's all processed? It doesn't, you're just getting off of the processed foods. And so that's helping any diet you go on to. Like, so that's why I think everybody sees some benefits on any diet. I think the lesson is that if you can see that benefit on carnivore and you can see that benefit on uh, vegetarian or vegan, what's the, what's the real thing? What's the real common thing? Stay off of that processed food. Right. Have right. your hands involved. This is what you're talking about. Have your hands involved in the meal creation because then what gets on your plate is good for you. Right, right. The problem, it's funny you say that. So the problem with, and again, we're not going to bash diets, obviously, because I write books about that. But look, look it, I left that off in the recap. It's fast one day a week for 18 to 20 hours, right? Yeah. Probably do two. No, you, no, you included that. No, you had the your no, recap. No, I know there, originally oh, in the recap. recap yeah, yeah. I left that off. But, yeah. but to talk about that, to, to talk about veganism, um, that's the failure of veganism. You just said it. Processed foods. Because what ends up happening is that most vegans don't, they're not militant about the prep. And then let's face it, if you want to be a vegan, and you can, but you have to be militant about prep. You have to get essential amino acids and, you know, lysine and certain things that you don't get as a vegan who, let's just call it a, a Trader Joe's or Whole Foods vegan, right? Who buys all <laughs> that packaged bullshit yeah. and eats that and and says, I'm a vegan, you know, and I, we all have friends. And I'm, again, I'm not casting. And you're going to get a lot of vegan hate mail again. But, 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 but look, <laughs> man, if you're going to do vegan right, there's still certain things that you can't avoid. Again, essential amino acids. There's certain vitamins and minerals and cofactors that you're not going to get from normally not eating, obviously, plant, uh, I mean, I mean animal-based protein sources. And so if you're not getting those, you will eventually go crazy. And obviously, a lot of people in the vegan world end up quitting veganism because they do get these deficiencies that come from eating packaged foods. And that's, again, that's the number one reason that vegan diets fail crisp because they eat packaged foods and yeah. you just said it they're all worthless now don't yeah. get me wrong each of us loves to eat a bag of chips or pretzels or doritos or whatever the hell it is we all have vices they taste good they're laden with very smart food scientists to chemically engineer the formulations to make you get addicted to them to make you crave them but it's moderation right and it's like not eating them at all when it's necessary, especially if you have like a weight problem. And that's the problem, dude, is like people are so controlled. I just did an amazing podcast with Sal from Mind Pump. And we were talking about how the food companies, Big Agra, pays these scientists all this money to manipulate the taste of the foods in the GMO engineered food. 
Yeah. And so people are addicted to the taste. They're not actually addicted to the food. So it's again, yep. it's a chemical thing in the brain that makes people eat this shitty food over and over again. Because bro, at the end of the day, both of us know when you eat food like that and you eat too much of it, it comes out, right? And you don't feel good to get rid of it, right? Yeah. So it's like, it's not, you're, it's, it's not that you're that dumb that you're like, well, why am I eating this? It's because your brain is being manipulated to eat it. And I'm not making that as an excuse, but these are very powerful chemicals. So people have to be cognizant of that. And, and, and so again, you said it already, moderation to elimination is the key. Yeah. 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 Have, have control of that. You know, it reminds me of the, um, the ad campaign. You just can't eat one. I don't know if that was Pringles or something. Yes. Dude. Isn't it a point like you just can't eat one? Maybe you shouldn't eat one. That's exactly. <laughs> like, I mean, I mean it, you said it. I mean, that, that, and that's another thing that kids don't know. You shouldn't have shit in your fucking pantry. Oh yeah. I mean, how simple is that? Don't have it around. When you get hungry and you walk into the kitchen, if there ain't any shit in the cabinet, you're not going to eat it. Yeah, you're going to figure out how to cook something that you can eat if you're actually hungry, which you're One probably step not. Further, you're going to have something that is good in the fridge ready for you to eat it. But do yeah. it again, it's time. It goes back to the beginning of this thing, time management. When how, do how people protein... have control of time? How much protein do you eat? And in, in, in like, what's your, tar do you have a target? So, so yeah, no problem. I mean, uh, every other day fasting. So yep. Tuesdays and Thursdays I'm fasting. So dude, I mean, I may not eat today. If I want to break my fast today, uh, which I might, I'm really right now on a, on a thing. Cause we're doing this program, uh, to get as lean as I can possibly can. So I'm going okay. like 24 hours and then waking up and eating oatmeal and uh, apple and a protein shake in the next morning. But on my eating day, I'm 208 pounds right now. Actually, I'm somewhere between 208 and 212 with water balance. Right. I'm always going to get 200 grams of protein. Yep. Period. End of story. Now, if I was wanting to gain muscle, which I'm clearly not, I would eat probably 250. Wow. And if yep. I was younger and I was little and I didn't have the muscle mass that I had right now, and I was truly aspiring to add 10 to 15 to 20 pounds of muscle, which is what most young guys in their 20s want to do, even women now, I would eat 250 to 275 grams of protein. Yeah. And, yep. I, and I would make that a priority. But I, again, at my age, I mean, I'm just a little bit younger than you. I turned 53 on February 24th. I 100% uh, main, main mandate that I get myself 175 to 200 grams of protein on my eating days. Yeah. You know? And if and I, sometimes if I that can be hard. Fast, well, look, this is important because you ask a good question and I don't answer this a lot. But if I do break my fast, I'll get 100 to 125 grams of protein and I'll have two protein shakes. I'll drink one protein shake with 50, 60 and another one, 50, 60 with MCT oil in it. Yeah. No carbs, but I'll still get enough protein to maintain, you know, uh, nitrogen, positive nitrogen retention. And I'll get my MCT oil for my essential fats. And then I'll go to bed and I won't have any kind of like glucose issues. I'm sleeping. You know, again, dude, how many people, I, this is on our last podcast, how many people, especially men eat big meals late at night? Mm. Yep. Because we're hungry. We're the warrior. We come home. We slayed the dragon. You know, we're bringing home the bacon, put food on the table, and now we want to eat. Yep. And guys literally will eat 2,000 calorie meals, bro, at 9 30 at night. Oh, no. Yeah. And go to bed at 10 30 or 11 o'clock or whatever, sometimes earlier with food digesting in their, in their digestive tract. And that is a recipe for inflammation. Yeah. Really disaster. I mean, you're going to get visceral yeah. body fat, belly fat, blah, blah, blah. Lack so of sleep. Like, yeah. If you just, again, warriors, old school, based on the sun coming up and down, if you just ate, and I know this bothers fasters and I'm a faster, but if you just ate when the sun was up and never ate when the sun was down, you would never have inflammation. Uh, but who does that? Yeah. And that and that's like the, you know, the paleo, you know, the people that, that really... Whole, it's like a hardcore Mediterranean paleo. They eat at 7 a.m. and the last meal was at 6 p.m. And then they're in bed at 10. You know what I'm saying? Or yeah. 9 30 or whatever. So, I mean, you know, I've had really smart doctors say to me, if you literally ate three times between sun up and sundown and never ate during the dark, and that and that includes obviously waking up in the middle of the night. Or even waking up early in the morning and eating when it's still dark out, you will you would reset your circadian rhythm 
So you would never have inflammation and you would never be inflamed. I mean, you wouldn't be able to be fat, bro, because you couldn't eat that many calories in the, in the time that the, the sun was up. It, it yeah. wouldn't be possible. Well, and we are presupposing that it's not processed foods. Like that's Me like too. you got to throw that in. You know, Bro, you, you're throwing on, out. That's a... actually a really good point. So Sal, that's a really good point. So Sal from Mind Pump says he does this challenge every single year to fat people that follow him. He says, if you take 30 days of your life and you remove all processed food, just a whole month, all processed food, and you only eat cooked, nutritious food, I don't care. This is what he says. And he goes, Jay, it works 100% of the time. I don't care how much food you eat every single day. He's like, you could be obese. And if you just ate, you know, fish, chicken, grass-fed beef, and potatoes, rice, not bread, you get because bread is manufactured for the most part. But just again, if God made it and you can cook it and you eat it, watch what happens. And he's like, bro, I have obese people that lose 25 to 30 pounds in a month and they're not even like lowering their caloric intake. So it is the processed foods. You're right. Yeah. You know, so so you're dropping a lot of knowledge bombs. It just makes me think, and and, and we've got to wrap up here pretty quickly. Right. One of the things that um, I, I, I wish I could say I did it super intelligently with like a, a vision of where this was going to land. Yep. But, but I ended up asking every one of the 55 experts Give me two to three uh, shortcuts, mindsets, let's yep. call them shortcuts because everybody likes shortcuts, about yep. living longer and living healthier. Uh, and it's one of the things I'm really pow- proud of. I'm actually collating that data. That's I don't know if that's going to turn into a free giveaway or something. Uh, it's probably going to turn into some sort of a, a course. So uh, I'm really excited about that. Um, oh, I see you've got the the pop-up there. That's There that, it is. Yep. That's a place they can get the book. Oh, I want to share this too. So one of the things we did, you can buy the book. I think it's like 20 bucks. You can buy it from our website. That's great. You can get it from, uh, and if you're going to go to the website, make sure you use myvitalc.com forward slash J, uh, and then you'll be able to find the book there. There it is. There it is. Ready to go with the code J. That gives you $15 <laughs> off of yeah. your initial order. But with the book, one of the things I did is I'm charging $10 if you want to sign copy. 100% of the $10 goes to or this is operation right. underground railroad uh awesome. you may remember the movie uh the yep. sound of freedom i just watched it the other day right so that guy's i happened to see him speak right before the movie came out and like so th- what they deal with is is trying to put a stop to to child sex trafficking yep uh, i can't it's hard to imagine a better cause like i i know everybody has about cause, that, bro. but that's a pretty good one um 100 of the sign uh, fee, right? So that $10 is going to Operation Underground Railroad. So I'm excited about that. That's awesome, man. Um, bro, amazing podcast. I know you got to wrap up here. Um, this is going to run either February 12th or February 19th for the listening audience. Uh, final say before. Yeah, that summit is actually February 26th. I think that's the right day. Uh, yep. Go ahead and sign up. You can. You just got to sign up for free. He's going to have the link there. Make sure you yep. use Jay's link. Uh, I'm, I'm excited when, if you, if you do end up going to myvitalc.com forward slash J, um, they, we've got all of our products. You can actually get a 25% discount. If you get on subscription, we're really like yep. want people on subscription. Now, having said that you can cancel at any time, right? We have, uh, our customer service team has about 800 plus five-star reviews. They're not trained to talk you out of it. So don't worry. Uh, take advantage of that discount. And, and and I'll just throw in, if you have a dog or a cat or any domesticated animal, because people will be like, but dude, I have a pig. Give your yeah. dog or cat or your pig carbon 60. Chris has bacon flavored. That's what my dogs use right now. They love it every single morning. It's like a ritual. Monica wakes up and feeds the little rat dog, Simba, who's the alpha, and then the pit bull next, and they both love it. And honestly, I told you it was genius that you guys bacon flavor it because it's an oil, right? And some dogs, they just kind of like, uh, we originally, before you did that, we were just throwing it in their food and they yeah. would eat it now. But now we literally, they look forward to get it. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's, it, a, it's pretty amazing. And yeah, one thing I good. love about dog testimonials that we have, uh, there is no placebo effect with no. dogs, right? No. Like they, no. they don't no. go, oh, I got my little dropper. So today I'm going to have more energy and be vibrant. 
know. Uh, they just feel it and they are it. And and we've got testimonials like I used to have to carry my dog downstairs. Now he bounds up the stairs. It's unreal, uh, dude. Our little rat dog has, like I said, extended his life by three to four years. I wow. mean, yeah, when we within one month of him giving that, and again, this is going back to 2019. He's yeah. still around right now. He's pretty much blind and deaf. We were playing games with him the other night. You know, behind him is no clue, but he is still amble and he still barks and he gets up and goes for his walks and he damn sure knows dude he's a pitter patterer so he wakes us up to get his carbon 60 in the morning oh wow that's awesome all right man i love you i appreciate you so guys and gals go to myvitalc.com forward slash j and pick up uh stuff for your you and your your family and of course your dogs and of course go over to live longer excuse me live longer and better book.com and pick up a copy of his book and then be on the lookout for the link in this show uh, to register for the longevity conference and remember raise your vibration to optimize your love creation we will see all of you guys very soon